Welcome to another edition of FastCast. Today, we will be interviewing Lisa Kutilla, CEO and Chief Economic Development Officer at STC UNM. Lisa will talk with us about how a small business would work with her office on STTR opportunities, the process for initializing a tech transfer at UNM, and some interesting technologies that are currently available for technology transfer. Alrighty, folks, thank you once again for joining us on another edition of our FastCast. Today, we're interviewing Lisa Kutula from stc.unm, where she is the CEO and Chief Economic Development Officer. Lisa, if you could real quickly introduce yourself to our audience and what you do at stc.unm. Uh, thank you, Dell. Um, Lisa Kutula, and I head up stc.unm. I'm the CEO and the university's chief economic development officer. STC is a separate corporation wholly owned by the University of New Mexico, charged with doing the technology transfer and economic development work on behalf of the university. Okay, great. So today we really wanted to talk about what opportunities there are for the STTR program through um, UNM and how people would be able to interact with your office for that. So I got a couple questions here for you. One, what does a small business need to know before inquiring about licensing a particular piece of technology from UNM for an STTR opportunity? Well, I think the most important thing for a small business to know is that we try to make that process as easy as possible. And uh, there are multiple ways that you can learn about technologies from inquiring directly from us, and we will highlight technologies in a certain area of interest. Or the small business can go on to the STC website and actually search by keywords and gather information about technologies that might be appropriate for an STTR. Okay, great. And so once they actually find something they're interested in licensing, how would a small business start the process of um, acquiring that piece of technology? And what kind of timeline does your office need if they're looking at an STTR submission? Well, I think we can be uh, very efficient with that kind of timeline um, and really turn things around in a matter of days if that's the case uh, for a deadline for an STTR application. Um, it's really just a matter of doing a fairly simple option agreement and that can is a few pages long and fairly easy to um, work out and we generally have a, a, a pretty low cost fee for a six month maybe extendable to 12 months and beyond type of option during the period of an STTR. STC is flexible so that if the company wants to pre-negotiate the terms of the license agreement or some of the terms of the license agreement in advance at the time they sign the option, they can do so, but there's really no requirement to have to do so. Okay. That license agreement that you were just referencing, is that um, like a development license or is it a testing license or exactly what type of a license is that? This is really for the existing, any existing intellectual property that may be background to the STTR research grant itself. Um, there may be intellectual property developed under the STTR that can be included in that license, but it's also important for the company to secure any background intellectual property. Uh, the license is really the transfer of the rights uh, so the intellectual property rights to the company, typically on an exclusive basis, so that the company has the security of knowing that they're going to have that intellectual property in their portfolio and they may need to do that in order to raise um, additional funding from investors or uh, secure other kinds of grants and perhaps um, even in terms of growth of the company through um, acquisitions or, or any other avenue they have for growth, having that IP secured is um, typically very important for a small business. So we wanna make that process as easy as possible, uh, starting with the option agreement, which I said can last from six months, maybe up to a period of two years, 
during the STTR, and then if it's successful, converting that into a, this license agreement. Okay, great. So I know that STC and UNM have quite a bit of technology that they're developing and they do quite a bit of research work. Do you have a particular piece of technology or a couple pieces of technology that you want to highlight that are currently available um, for tech transfer? You know, you asked a really tough question because we have so many technologies. So there's literally over 500 pieces of um, technology highlighted on our website. Uh, summarize so people can really search through those and, and get some ideas. Um, one of the areas uh, that I might just mention is really in our biomedical engineering department and a technology for example um, is in uh, having a technology that's used in uh, when fractures in, in, in bones are treated and, and surgery is indicated is this technology is a mesh plate uh, that can fixate uh, fractures where there are high stresses such as a knee or an elbow um, and the mesh plate is stable uh, allows the stability and it will dissolve and uh, does not cause irritation in that arena so we think that's got pretty broad applications for orthopedics and uh, biomaterials. Uh, one area that's very hot right now is tissue engineering, and this, is, mm. this technology fits right into that kind of application. It definitely sounds like a very interesting piece of technology. Um, you had mentioned that you cross a lot of boundaries with your technologies. Are there any scientific research realms that UNM doesn't really um, work with, or do you kind of cross the spectrum of every single you know, scientific discipline? There are a considerable number of disciplines. Uh, you know, we have a medical school and a college of pharmacy, so life science is, um, you know, certainly about half of our portfolio. Mm -hmm. But we also have many inventions in the engineering uh, and some of our specialized research centers. So things like photonics and optics are very strong at UNM. We have a number of things from computer science and computer engineering having to do with new algorithms and software that, um, that enables entirely new applications, for example. And then, as I mentioned, the previous technology example, uh, biomedical engineering through our Center for Biomedical Engineering um, results in the creation of things that, that span that boundary between engineering and, um, you know, biology or chemistry, uh, which have, have resulted in new materials and other technologies, sometimes instrumentation, that, um, that cross those special boundaries. Well, it sounds like y'all work on quite a bit of different stuff there. Um, we'll make sure that uh, all of our uh, listening audience has a direct link to the stc.unm page so that they can peruse those technologies and see if there's anything they're interested in possibly trying to work with uh, uh, UNM on a license for. Absolutely. They can check out um, under the technology portfolio section of the website, which is called STC dot unm dot edu you can see some highlighted technologies which we call featured technologies we change from time to time um, as well as um, really being able to search the entire portfolio one of the features of our website is that it's part of a bigger system that over 500 research institutions worldwide utilize so let's say you're interested in tissue engineering for example you could search the STC uh, website for technologies in that area, but then you can also search the entire list of all those research institutions mm -hmm. and therefore kind of compare and contrast what you see from one institution from STC to many others. And, and that's very helpful for small businesses looking to uh, research the uh, IP or technology in a certain uh, discipline. That's actually a great piece of information and I will definitely make sure to highlight that because it sounds like a really interesting way to catalog everything that's possibly out there that a small business might be able to use 
um, because the more tools and resources they have access to, the better their uh, chances are in getting an SBIR or an STR, uh, STTR award. Absolutely. And there's even something called a tag cloud um, on this uh, site. So you can pick on diagnostic, nanoparticles, optoelectronics, therapeutics, uh, drug delivery, fuel cells, and click on one of those tags, and then it takes you to all, a listing of those technologies. Once you go into a specific technology, you can see uh, a description of the actual technology, some background, the advantages and uh, benefits, and also download any uh, issued intellectual property. Hmm. You can download um, uh, publications affiliated with it. Um, I'll also mention that it lists the researchers on the side of the page. You can click on one of those researchers then and then get a listing of their entire portfolio. So it's really a very helpful tool for a small business to be as efficient as possible with their time. Yeah, it definitely sounds amazing. I'll have to look into that myself. It sounds like something that the small business I work for might be able to utilize. Well, and we thank you again for being able to join um, the uh, cast and interview today with us, uh, Lisa. And for all of our listening audience, we'll make sure that uh, the links to everything that Lisa described is in the um, description and also pops up on our um, video as you watch it. So once again, thank you, Lisa, for joining us. And we greatly appreciate the opportunity to um, talk to, uh, talk with you today about STTR, UNM, and how people might be able to work with the um, technology transfer process there. And thank you, Dell, for the opportunity. Have a great one.